In some circumstances, cell phones use the location of nearby Wi-Fi networks to determine their GPS location. Today, we'll spoof that location using Skyjack on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Cell phones nowadays use a lot of different tricks to find your location, and GPS signals from space are not the only ones that most phones use to fix your location. There are some settings in your phone that refer to a GPS or assisted GPS, and this is something that nearly all Android users contribute to when they're walking around reporting the location of various Wi-Fi networks that they encounter. Now, this list of different Wi-Fi networks and their relative locations is an asset for cell phones because it allows them to locate you when other signals are not available. So if you're deep in a mall or inside a building that has poor access to these signals from space that typically signal your location, you can rely on the location of nearby Wi-Fi networks to spell that information out instead. Now today, we're going to be using an ESP8266 and a program called Skyjack to simulate different Wi-Fi networks that exist in known locations. And if we're in an area that doesn't have a lot of other Wi-Fi networks and has poor access to signals from space, like an uh, indoor location with a lot of concrete, then we should be able to successfully spoof any location we want. In order to follow this guide, you'll need Arduino and an ESP8266 and a suitable location for testing. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, as it's full of information for troubleshooting. Once you're ready and you have Arduino up on your computer, then we can begin. Today, we're going to be using a tool called Skylift in order to basically spoof our location to Mark Zuckerberg's pool. Now, the way this works is we're going to broadcast a bunch of networks with a known location. So if we're in an area that has really terrible GPS reception and not very many other Wi-Fi networks, our phone will believe that we're actually hanging out at Mark Zuckerberg's house. All right, so let's begin by going to github.com slash adamhrv slash skylift. Next, we can scroll down and see exactly what this project is about. There's even a hardware board you can buy, which is really cool, but we're just gonna be doing the quick start guide with Arduino. Now that means you'll need to have Arduino IDE installed. And to get started then, we'll click on clone or download. And from the address here, we'll go into a terminal window and type git clone, then the address. And once it finishes downloading, we can type cd to go into the directory and skylift ls, and you'll see the Arduino directory inside of it. Type cd Arduino ls, and then skylift cd skylift demo. All right, here we can see we have skylift demo.ino. So let's try just typing open skylift demo.ino. And that should open up Arduino IDE and the appropriate uh, sketch. All right, now what we're going to need to do is follow the quick start instructions for making sure that we have everything necessary to work with this board. Now I'm going to exit out of this extra one. And you can see here that if you haven't previously added your ESP, you'll first need to copy this link because it'll give us the ability to add the board within Arduino. Now in Arduino, we can click on Arduino Preferences, then go to Additional Board Manager URL, and go ahead and paste that URL in here. Press OK, OK again, and then go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, type in ESP8266, and you should see right here the Community Edition, which you can then install. Once that's installed, you'll be able to go to Tools, board, Oops. and then select an ESP8266 base board, as I have here with the D1 Mini. Once you have that selected, you'll need to go to port and then select the port that yours is connected to, in my case, USB to UART. And once that's all complete, we should be able to first verify and then upload our sketch. Now I'm going to do it all in one just by pressing this button. And we should hope to see that our Arduino will accept the code and upload it and then reboot itself. 
there we go. Now our Arduino should be, oh, sorry, our ESP that is programmed in Arduino should be emitting the fake Wi-Fi networks. So if we're in an area with poor, uh, poor GPS reception and not very many other Wi-Fi networks, it might already be working. Once we load Skylift onto an ESP8266, we'll need to go somewhere suitable to test it out. Preferably, we'll need somewhere that has absolutely no access to GPS signals, meaning somewhere underground or with no really big windows. Secondarily, we'll need to make sure that there's not too many competing Wi-Fi signals, because any of these could allow our phone to correctly identify where we are. If we manage to find a good location with few Wi-Fi signals and no access to GPS, then we should be able to successfully spoof our location. Skyjack is incredibly cool. However, it only works under a couple of circumstances. So make sure you avoid the following different things that can really mess up this attack. First is the presence of a lot of different strong Wi-Fi signals, because if they've already been geolocated by multiple phones, then it will make it almost definite that your phone will choose them over the fake networks that we're creating using Skyjack. The second is the line of sight ability to receive GPS signals. So if you're near a window or if you are in an environment where those signals can simply pass through the roof, then you may experience the phenomena of your phone using the more accurate GPS signals to determine its location. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for any troubleshooting you might need. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.